So today I'm going to present、um, a survey we conducted at an historical Italian library, the Classense Library, where we explored the long-term permanence of the paper-based collection. Before going into the details of this case study, I would like to start from some more general data and studies about Italian libraries. As reported in the statistics elaborated by the Register of the Italian Libraries, that has been conducting a census of the libraries since the 19th, about 12,000 libraries have been censed in the Italian territory, including public and private university libraries, national or foreign institutional libraries, private and religious libraries. And if we look at the year of foundation of this library, sorry, yeah, the year of foundation of this library, we can see that about the half of these libraries were founded from 1972, and about the 15 percent was founded before the 19th century. Over the last 10 years, several studies have been conducted on the microclimate conditions. In historic Italian libraries, in these studies, temperature and relative humidity ranges have been suggested、uh, by national and international standards and guidelines. Have been frequently used as threshold values to evaluate the quality of the environmental conditions for the conservation of library materials. With the result that often the values monitored. Are outside the suggested range for temperature and relative humidity. However, recent standards and guidelines focus on a greater flexibility in the climate control strategy, proposing concepts such as usefulness and sustainability. Indeed, in the European Standard 6893, published in 2018, we can read that. An environmental management strategy shall include a statement of the expected collection lifetime and energy demand. So, how can we deal with the concept of expected collection lifetime? We all know that not all changes due to degradation in heritage materials can be considered to be damage. However, Once the value of interest is identified for an object, then we can evaluate when that object became no longer fit for use with respect to that particular value, due to changes of state. So, in other words, we can define its lifetime with respect to that particular value. In this regard, in case of archival and library documents intended to be read. It has been found that discoloration and tears have less influence on the fitness for use than missing pieces, and so it has been suggested that archival and library documents intended to be read reach their threshold fitness for use when they become too brittle to be handled safely to withstand with manual handling. Indeed, in an experiment involving handling of mock archival and library items, it has been explored how mechanical degradation and so how wear and tear accumulate during handling challenges resembling reading, and it has been found that the degree of polymerization, that is a chemical property of the paper which measures the average length. Of the cellulose chain and which decreases with degradation, can be used as a parameter to assess the fitness for use of paper objects. And in particular, it has been estimated that the paper with an average degree of polymerization of 300 is exposed to risks of mechanical failure. And therefore, this value, degree of polymerization of 300. Has been suggested to be used as threshold value for safe handling. So now the question is: When does an object or a collection reach this critical degree of polymerization, 
or in other words, which is the expected lifetime. Currently, we can now rely on new evidence-based tools that enable us to model the expected lifetime. And in particular, we can rely on non-destructive methods of analysis that allow us to characterize heritage materials in terms of chemical properties, such as pH and degree of polymerization of the paper. And we can also rely on those response functions which describe the material changes caused by stressors. In particular, in this case study, we use the collection demography dose response function that has been modeled experimentally for historic paper and which describes the rate of change, the rate of degradation of, of the paper, depending on the acidity, so pH, and the environmental context, so temperature and relative humidity. So the key knowledge, the, the knowledge of some key parameters that are pH and degree of polymerization, and the predictive nature of the dose response functions allow us to predict the expected lifetime in diverse conservation scenarios. And within this framework, we conducted a survey of the historical collection housed at the Classense Library. And so basically, we applied non-destructive methods of analysis and the dose response function to predict the time for objects to become too brittle to withstand manual handling, so to predict the expected lifetime. And so we measured non-destructively the books, and the results were used to evaluate the current conservation state of the collection and using the damage function, the dose response function, to predict the expected lifetime. The library, the Classense Library, is located in Ravenna, in the urban area of Ravenna, a city in the north of Italy, in a 16th century building that was originally designed as a monastery and then converted into a library at the beginning of the 19th century to house the monastery collection. And over its history, the building has undergone numerous enlargement works so that currently it covers an extension of 28,000 square meters, is a three-story building with numerous rooms. This is, for instance, the so-called Aula Magna on the second floor, and this is the so-called Sala de Santi Padri on the third floor. The collection of the Classense Library counts about 800,000 items, including parchment and paper documents, maps, photographs, manuscripts, and incunambula. And preliminary discussion with the curator of the library pointed out that the general conservation actions and the practice implemented at the library follow the principle for the care and handling of library material recommended by the International Federation of Libraries Association. I report here some of the general measures at the library, such as the cleaning of the indoor and of the surroundings, checking for signs of insects or biological infestation, or the opening of the windows in certain conditions, such as the early hours in the summer period, or the use of curtains to keep out the direct sunlight, suitable boxes for the conservation of the most sensitive items, and also training activities for all the staff about preventive conservation practices. And finally, the installation of a system to keep constant temperature and relative humidity in a secure room. Indeed, as I mentioned before, the, the library consists of numerous rooms, but actually we can consider two main different storage environments in the library that are the non-controlled environment where temperature and relative humidity are not mechanically controlled and thus affected by seasonal trends, and the controlled environment that is the secure room called the Cavo, where temperature and relative humidity are mechanically controlled since 2012 and are 20 degrees Celsius and 60% relative humidity. So on the basis of these two different storage environments, 
we consider the paper-based collection of the library as composed by two different collections that are the C collection, which groups all the books housed in the caveau, and which includes the most valuable objects of the library, such as the Oratore, the first Italy's incunambulum, and the NC collection, which groups all the books housed in the numerous rooms of the libraries where temperature and relative humidity are not mechanically controlled. We analyzed about 300 paper items, including printed books, incunabula, manuscripts, dated from the 14th to the 20th century, using the Sarvenir instrument, which non-destructively provides numerous chemical properties, such as the acidity of the paper, the degree of polymerization, the contents of lignin, protein, rosin, and also the type of the pulp of the paper. So if it is rag paper or groundwood pulp paper. And we use this data to evaluate the current conservation state of the collection. I show you here this graph, which plot the property of interest on the y-axis and the publication date on the x-axis. As a first thing, we can see that three different kinds of paper were identified using the survey. That are the rag paper books, the green points, the ground wood pulp paper books, the orange points, and bleached pulp paper books, the gray points. If we look at the graph on the left, which plots the pH values as a function of publication date, we can see that, as expected, the ground wood pulp paper books resulted to be more acidic than the rag paper books. If we look at the graph in the center, which plots the, pro the protein content as a function of publication date, we can see that there is a gradual decrease in protein content towards the early 19th century. While if we look at the lignin content, again, as a function of publication date, we can see that, as expected, groundwood pulp paper books have higher lignin content. And so these opposite trends, I mean, pH and lignin content, as a function of publication date, are expected as the result of the use of wood-derived fibers and additives in the papermaking technology right about that time, that is the second half of the 19th century. But as I mentioned before, chemical properties, and in particular, pH and DP data, were further used to model conservation scenarios. This model and modeling approach will be discussed in more detail during the tomorrow workshop, modeling tools for conservation decision making. So without going too much into the details, through the collection demography dose response function modeled for historic paper and through the equation for cellulose chain scission, we were able to calculate the time T for an object to reach the critical degree of polymerization for safe handling. Depending on the current degree of polymerization of the paper, on the current acidity, both measured using the survey, and depending on the environmental context, so temperature and relative humidity. So basically, we were able to predict the expected lifetime of the collection. And here we go to the predictions. These plots show the so-called demographic curves, which report the percentage of books fit for purpose, and so which can be handled safely on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis. And this vertical dashed line represents the long-term planning horizon of 500 years. As a first thing, we can see that now, so at time zero, all the books, 100% of the C collection and 100% of the NC collection, are in a fit for use state. So all the books can be handled safely. But if we look at the predictions for the C collection on the left, 
develop that 20 degrees Celsius and 60% relative humidity that are the conditions inside the Cavour room, we can see two different profiles. In particular, this dashed dotted line includes the, de the degrading effects of iron gold ink. And we took into consideration the effects of iron gold ink using the acceleration factor for paper impregnated with this kind of ink as reported in the literature. And if we look at this prediction, we can see that more than a half of the C collection is predicted to become unfit in 500 years. If we look at the predictions developed for the NC collection, these includes both interventive, such as mass deacidification, the green line, and preventive actions, such as the blue line that is cooling. If we look, for instance, at the black line, developed at 20 degrees Celsius and 60% relative humidity, we can see that about the 40% of the books is predicted to be unfit in 500 years. While if we look at the mass deacidification scenario, a treatment so that the paper was the pH of the paper was supposed to be about eight, we can see that nearly all the books are predicted to be fit for use in 500 years. So in this way, we can easily compare the preservation outcomes for long-term conservation. As a result of the survey, the heritage managers of the Classense Library identified intervention priorities. And so, according to their available resources, they will proceed with digitization of the most fragile objects, paying particular attention to the manuscripts with iron gold ink stored in the Cabo room. And in addition, our results suggest also that the temperature and relative humidity levels inside the Cabo room could be decreased to 18 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity in winter. And this seasonal adjustment that at the moment is under evaluation by the heritage managers of the library would improve the overall preservation outcome and at the same time would also reduce the energy cost of the system. Using the same approach as the Classense case study, I would like also to report about the development of this web app that we can find at this link. And as I hope I will be able to show you, this tool allows to very easily predict the lifetime, so the time for a book to become too brittle to be handled safely. And we can use this app to calculate the lifetime for a single object or for a collection. Let's try, for instance, to calculate the lifetime of an object depending on material and environmental context. So let's say that we have a slightly acidic paper, so with pH 6, with a current degree of polymerization of 1,500. The critical degree of, polymer sorry, the critical degree of polymerization is 300. And let's say that we have 20 degrees Celsius temperature and 50% relative humidity. So we can, okay, we can easily calculate the lifetime that is 700 years. But for instance, if, if we have a more acidic paper, we can compare this with 400 years, or if we have 18 degrees Celsius, then we will have 550 years as predicted lifetime. So in this way, we can easily compare preservation outcomes. However, while such survey, such as the Classense survey and the app, represent already efficient way of conservation scenario modeling, we actually do not know how much these data are accurate. And this is what we are going to explore with Project Uncerti. Uncerti is a Marie Sklodowska Curie project that received funding in the framework of Horizon 2020, on which I started 
working at the University of Ljubljana one month ago. And its main aim is right to evaluate the uncertainty associated with this kind of data, so with lifetime modeling based on infrared spectroscopy based quantitative data as the data acquired during the class census survey. And thanks to the participation of two partners involved that are the German company Zentrum für Buchhaltung and the National and University Library of Slovenia, we will also carry out case study on heritage materials. And so we will go through, we will explore the sources and the contributions of the uncertainty associated with this data that can be related to the heterogeneity of the materials, to the sampling methods, to the models applied, and so on. So thank you for your kind attention. And thanks to the organizer of the conference. These are my contacts. Please contact me also in the future if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions. <laughs> Thank you. Floriana Coppola. Grazie mille. Vielen, vielen Dank an dieser Stelle für diesen Input, äh, liebes Publikum. Wenn Fragen sind, und ich schaue hier auch nochmal ins Auditorium, bisher keine. Lassen Sie mich vielleicht kurz fragen. Ähm, genau. Sie setzen sich jetzt Ihre Kopfhörer auf, damit Sie mich verstehen. Wurden denn, Floriana Coppola, bisher Ergebnisse der Fallstudie auch in praktischen Anwendungen eingesetzt? Uh, yes, well, uh, actually, the um, heritage managers of the Class Sensor Library are going to plan um, digitization of the most fragile objects. So thanks to this survey, we identified most fragile objects of the library, I mean, the category of the most fragile objects. And we will um, proceed with the digitization of these objects according to their available resources. Jetzt gibt es eine Frage hier im Chat. Da wird gefragt, ist die Collections Demography App frei zugänglich und wenn ja, wo findet man den Link? Yes, the app is freely accessible and I can show again the link. And it, yeah. Prima, also hier wird nochmal der Link gezeigt zu der App. Und ansonsten können Sie auch jederzeit noch mal direkt nachfragen. Den Kontakt hatte uns Floriana Coppola ja auch bereits gegeben. Vielleicht noch eine Frage, liebe Floriana. Wie offen sind denn Einrichtungen für derartige externe Forschung? Können Erkenntnisse überhaupt umgesetzt werden? Was sind denn da Ihre Erfahrungen? Uh, well, um, uh, I had the opportunity to work with uh, the Classense Library also during my master uh, degree to carry out the um, microclimate monitoring of the environment. So uh, I would say that yes, the, the institutions are open to to, to get insight in about their environment and their holdings. Um, and yes, I, I had positive feedback from uh, the heritage managers, in particular from the curator of the library about the results. So yes, I think that it was a great experience also in, for practical reason. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, due to the COVID restrictions, uh, we uh, didn't have uh, yet the chance to present the results to the public, but one of the um, aim of this survey is also to engage public. So we are going to present the results in a public event uh, next month at the library, hopefully uh, in person, but we will see. But yes, this is, was also another practical um, topic attached to this survey. Ja, vermutlich ist das Problembewusstsein der Institution ganz oben angekommen. Die nächste Frage schließt sich aus dem Chat tatsächlich auch da noch mal an, ob die Studie tatsächlich schon veröffentlicht ist, möchte Stefanie Nagel wissen. Yeah, actually we published the, the, the results of this case study into two different publications because um, 
with the data we obtained, we were able to evaluate the current conservation state, and so we published, uh, I will show the, sorry, okay. Here, we published uh, uh, last year um, part one that is about paper characterization, and then we published uh, part two that is about conservation scenario modeling uh, that you can find uh, at this uh, reference.